Hey, what's up everyone? Today I want to talk to you guys about my favorite modifier. So this is going to be the Amaran Spotlight SE. This is such a fun product and I'm really excited to show you it. But before we get started, if you aren't already subscribed, definitely make sure to smash that subscribe button since I do a lot of gear videos like this and videos to help you guys out on your creative journey, whatever that looks like for you. And I'd love to have you as a part of the community. So starting off here, you get another one of these nice little Amaran foam cases, which is actually pretty cool since it has a bunch of spaces for all of the optional accessories if you do choose to pick them up later. At the top here, you're gonna get your spotlight with the lens that you've purchased already installed. And at the bottom left, you're going to be getting your gobo holder and a set of 15 M-sized gobos. If you wanna get the 18 leaf iris, or if you wanna get your other lens, whether it's the 36 degree or the 19, whichever one you don't have, you can pick those up separately and there's spots there for those. Moving on here, this is a bones mount light modifier, which means that it can pretty much be used on any bones mount light that you want. But I should mention that you should be very careful which light you attach this to since it was designed specifically for lights all the way up to the Amaran 300C. So if you have a light with a higher output than 300 watts, it's possible that you could cause serious damage to either the light or the modifier or both. So just be aware of that. But once you have it mounted up, you can open it up with all four shutters so that way you get the full spotlight diameter. To change the focus, you simply undo this little red knob and then you can just slide the lens in and out and that'll change the focal point. If you wanna cut the light at all, you can use the built-in shutters. One thing that I'll note is that the way that the shutters work is opposite. So it's an optical system and generally speaking with optical systems, things get reversed. So if you wanna cut light from the left, you're going to wanna to push in on the right. If you wanna cut light from the top, you're gonna to wanna to push in from the bottom and so on. So if you wanna chop light, you can absolutely do that and you can get really nice clean cuts, which is really cool. Although it's really cool, one of the things that I think is kind of frustrating about this system is that with the shutters, if you push them in a little bit too far or you twist them a little bit too hard to make very small, fine type of cuts, you're not going to really be able to do that well without the iris or you're just gonna end up getting a very, very small sliver of light, which is probably not what you want. You probably want a nice slash, but that's one of the things that's kind of frustrating about this is that you can see sort of the ends of these shutters when you're moving them, which is not really ideal. But again, like I said, it's not the end of the world. And mainly, I think a lot of you guys are probably gonna be interested in using gobos. So you can see back behind me, I have one of the gobos up with just a standard warm type of uh, color temperature on it. And I think it looks pretty nice. It's a little bit out of focus, adds a little bit of texture to the background. And I think that's what a lot of people are kind of going for these days. So I think it's pretty cool. And if you want to use a gobo, it's very simple. You just take your holder out with the springy side facing out, then drop your gobo of choice in and then put it into the top slot. Unfortunately, unlike the Aperture Spotlight Max, this gobo doesn't actually allow you to rotate um, while the gobo is inside of the holder. So if you want to change your alignment at any point in time, you're going to have to remove the gobo holder entirely and then rotate the gobo by hand, which can be a little bit frustrating, especially if you're trying to get a very precise alignment. That's not really going to happen super easily. Another thing to note too is that it's going to be pretty hot when you're taking it out which is probably a good time to give a huge warning to you guys. Regardless of the light that you're using, the system's gonna get very, very hot. So always be sure to check the surfaces before you try to move it or swap gobos or anything like that, because you could definitely burn yourself on this. And along those lines, though it hasn't really happened to me, if you're using gobos for the first time, you may notice some smoke coming out of the top of the modifier. If you do, this is entirely normal and it's just a result of the paint on the gobos burning in under the heat of the light. So don't get too upset or scared. Nothing is actually happening that's going to cause damage. It's just a standard thing that happens sometimes with gaffer type gear. 
The last thing that I wanted to talk about is going to be the lens choice. So in my instance, I purchased the 19 degree lens option, which in retrospect might not have been necessarily the best choice for my purposes. Since I do most of my videos in a small room and 19 degrees is rather narrow for that particular use case, which means that I'm going to need to put the light quite a bit further away from the wall than I might like in order to get a decently large illuminated area. So in that case, I would highly recommend getting the 36 degree lens since it's going to light up almost twice the amount of area at a given distance as the 19 degree will. So all in all, do I recommend this modifier? Absolutely. Ever since I've gotten this modifier, I've been using it in pretty much every single one of my videos. And I think it's really nice because it gives a lot of texture and interest into boring backgrounds and environments like this room here. And it's not really that nice of a place in reality, but you know, if I use some lighting tricks and I have the right focal length, it doesn't actually look so bad. And for only 355 bucks for the basic kit, you really can't go wrong with this. If you wanna pick up the iris, that's gonna cost you an extra 50 bucks. And if you wanna pick up the 36 degree lens, that'll cost you 150. So again, like I said, not really too bad, especially considering that some of these other spotlight type products can cost upwards of $1,000 or more. So if you wanna pick one of these up, I'll definitely be leaving some links down in the description for you guys. And if you use those, it'll help out the channel a little bit. But if you guys did like the video, definitely make sure to drop a like, leave a comment, subscribe, and share with anybody who you think might find some value from it. And I will see you guys in the next video. Later.